My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Jesus, you speak to us very directly today in the Gospel, and very, I suppose, incisively, you challenge us, always for our good. You raise the bar, we might say. I say to this to you who are listening, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who treat you badly. And a little later, if you love those who love you, what thanks can you expect? Even sinners love those who love them. And a little further on again, Jesus, you say, be compassionate as your father is compassionate. Do not judge and you will not be judged yourselves. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned yourselves. Grant pardon and you will be pardoned. Well, in all these great qualities, Lord Jesus, of mercy, patience, unconditional love, forgiveness, availability, compassion, we recognize you. We can see clearly in your teaching what amounts to a portrait of yourself, the loving Jesus, merciful Jesus, the patient one, patient above all in your passion, the one who loves unconditionally, who turns the other cheek, who is all goodness, and we also recognize in these qualities the person of Mary, our mother, the mother of mercy, the first and perfect disciple of, of the Lord. Today is a lovely feast, the feast of the holy name of Mary. And what's in a name? Well, we know that a name is very significant because a name a person's name expresses who they are, their individuality, somehow their sacredness. That's why a name is important. It, it humanizes a person, you might say. And to take away somebody's name is somehow to dehumanize them. Um, in that book, The Tattooist of Auschwitz, there's an account there, a very sobering account of the the tattooist who imprints a tattoo on every one of the poor prisoners who, who goes to that concentration camp. And one realizes that what's happening there is that those individual persons are being stripped somehow of their humanity. They're reduced to being a number, a cog in a wheel, a piece of machinery, as it were. To take away someone's name is, is dehumanizing especially if it's done like that deliberately. And on the contrary, when somebody remembers our name, it makes us happy. And when someone calls us by our name in an affectionate and warm way, it inspires us with the feeling of gratitude and of love to be recognized for who we are. Because every person, in a sense, contains within him or herself the whole universe of God's love. And somehow that's condensed in the person's name. So what about the name of Our Lady? Today's feast, the holy name of Mary. What about your name, Mother? Well, maybe it's as well for us to remember that occasion when a very young girl, Bernadette Subiru, repeatedly asked you, what is your name? having encountered this beautiful lady at the Grotto of Massabiel on several occasions, Bernadette asks you, the beautiful lady, she keeps calling you the beautiful lady, but she doesn't know your name. And, 
and she asks you, what is your name? And you, mother, eventually you answer the question by smiling, by smiling. A very beautiful smile, which St. Bernadette never ever forgot. And after that, a little later, you say, you said to Bernadette in her own dialect, in the patois of that region of France, you said, I am the Immaculate Conception. You gave your name as the Immaculate Conception. But what is beautiful and very noteworthy, I guess, is that Mary's first response to the question of what her name is, is a smile. That expresses so much of who Mary is. Pope Benedict XVI celebrated Mass for a vast throng of sick people on the Esplanade in front of the Basilica at Lourdes uh, on the Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows in 2008. The Holy Father Benedict was there on a jubilee of the apparition of Our Lady. And uh, I think it was the 150th anniversary, to be precise. And speaking to the sick, uh, the Pope gave an extraordinarily beautiful homily about the smile of Mary. And in that homily, he said, Here in Lourdes, in the course of the apparition of Wednesday, the 3rd of March, 1858, Bernadette contemplated the smile of Mary in a most particular way. It was the first response that the beautiful lady gave to the young visionary who wanted to know who she was. Before introducing herself some days later as the Immaculate Conception, Mary first taught Bernadette to know her smile, this being the most appropriate point of entry into the revelation of her mystery. Well, it is a lovely thing to, to notice, isn't it, that Mary, first of all, reveals her personality by her smile. And then afterwards, she tells us that she is, in person, the Immaculate Conception. You, Mary, you're, you're all holy, you're all pure, you're all beautiful, mother without stain, and at the same time, you're so close to us, there's no contradiction. I remember once somebody uh, expressing, I suppose, a conundrum, and they said, well, I have great regard for Mary, I have devotion to Our Lady, but I think the way they put it was, she's the Immaculate Conception, but I'm no Immaculate Conception. And uh, that person said, well, in some ways I see her as very beautiful, as very wonderful, but as somehow somewhat distant from me, somewhat distant from me because she's so holy. I remember hearing this reasoning, and with very, it was said with very good will, of course, but I knew it wasn't correct. It couldn't be right. No, the very fact in that Our Lady is so holy is the reason why she is so close to us. The closer a person is to God, the closer that person is to people. And we see this above all, or in, in a very primary way, in Mary. The fact that she is so close to God is the reason why she is so close to human beings. Yes, indeed, Mother, you are the Immaculate Conception. You are the highest honour of our race. And through that and for that and by that very fact, you are so close to us, so loving, so attentive. So the name of Mary, the holy name of Mary, we could say it's the name of the closeness of God. It's all expressed in Our Lady's smile. I guess for a newborn baby, their first experience as such, which I'm sure they perceive in some way, is the smile of their mother. And before Our Lady, we also experience that smile, which is a newness of life. Because when we look at Our Lady, when we look, when we look at Mary, we see what we are called to be, fully holy and fully happy. Mother, mother of the sweet name Mary, mother of the smile, mother immaculately conceived, be close to us and help us to realise, indeed, how close you are to each one of us. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations you have communicated to me in this time of prayer. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My mother immaculate, Saint Joseph, my father and Lord, 
my guardian angel, intercede for me. 